Welcome to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Continuing Medical Education Podcast. Join us each week to discuss the most pressing topics in cardiology and gain valuable insights that can be directly applied to your practice. Hello, this is Dr. Steve Kopetsky, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, where I'm a preventive cardiologist. It's my pleasure today to talk with Dr. Reka Mancad about women's risk factors. Welcome, Dr. Mancad. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Now, women's risk factors have really taken a higher profile, I think, certainly in the guidelines. Tell us about the recent guidelines and what they added to women's risk factors for heart disease. Yeah, that's a great question. So first, we have to recognize that the reason this came about is we saw that women were getting under-recognized for their heart disease risk. We thought that heart disease was really a man's disease. And when we started realizing several years ago that women were dying of heart disease at higher rates, we really had to open our eyes and take a look at this a little bit further. And yes, women have the same regular risk factors that as men do, like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and smoking. But there's some additional risk factors that are very female-specific. Uh, one of those is menopause. So just the age of menopause is a risk factor for heart disease. The earlier you develop menopause, the more risk you have because estrogen is a protection against heart disease. So if you've had uh, surgical menopause or early natural menopause, that's more time in your life that you don't have the protective effects of estrogen. So that's one female-specific risk factor. The other one that's really important to recognize is uh, risks that actually um, happen during pregnancy. So certain complications that happen during pregnancy do increase your risk of heart disease later in life. And what would those complications be, like blood pressure, blood sugar, what, uh, what type of thing? Yeah, actually both of those. So gestational diabetes is a risk for developing diabetes later in life. So important to recognize that Again, diabetes is a risk factor for heart disease, so gestational diabetes tells us that something is not quite right from that aspect so that, again, later you might develop diabetes, full-blown diabetes, and that, again, is a risk factor for heart disease. But the other one that's actually taken on uh, greater importance recently as we've recognized uh, the data is hypertension during pregnancy or blood pressure disorders of pregnancy. So having preeclampsia, a eclampsia or a gestational hypertension, which means transient elevations in blood pressure during pregnancy, all of those are actually risk factors for heart disease later in life. Okay. Now, you know, the, these risk factors, they're not all the same, obviously. Can you give us a feel for, you know, how much of a risk this is? I mean, you mentioned that if your menopause was earlier, like if, say, your menopause, instead of what's the average age for menopause? 52. 52. So say you had it a decade earlier. Is there a rule of thumb a decade earlier means, you know, X number percent increase? or Not really. I think all, there isn't really a number that we place on it. We just realize that having that happen a decade earlier, five years earlier, just does increase your risk. But we really can't give it an absolute number. We certainly don't uh, change our risk score to change the number. So when we see a patient and we do their atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk score, we come up with a number. And then there's these other factors that we know increase that number, but we don't actually give them a new number. We just know that it increases risk. And the pregnancy risk factors are actually included in the prevention guidelines as risk enhancers. So when somebody uh, talks about their risk factors, Knowing their pregnancy history is important because that might be a, an enhancer to their risk score that further increases their risk of having a heart attack or stroke later in life, which means that preventative measures may need to be uh, instituted earlier. So maybe that's medicines, certainly discussion about how that influences risk. Okay. Now, Rick, I know you also run our women's heart clinic. And what about the idea of a woman developing diabetes? There's some evidence that when a woman develops diabetes, that's more of a risk than there is a man who develops diabetes. Can you comment on that? Yeah, that's true. So although we talk about these traditional risk factors, which diabetes is one of them, the influence of that on the risk score seems to be greater for a woman, meaning that a female diabetic has greater risk than her male counterpart who has diabetes. I don't know if we fully know why that is. It might be that a woman's arteries 
One, they're a little bit smaller, but also women tend to have more what we call endothelial dysfunction, meaning the arteries don't relax properly. They have more symptoms related to small vessel disease. So diabetes influences that small vessel disease. So women seem to be more prone to not only symptoms related to that, but also the bad outcomes related to that. So I think it's complex, so we don't know the exact why, but we know that diabetes specifically is a greater risk for a woman. Smoking also is the same thing. So a female smoker incurs greater risk for heart disease than a, her male counterpart who smokes the same number of cigarettes. Oh, very interesting. Now, how? what if a woman wants to assess her risk? Is there a way that she can do that? Well, I think it's really important to undergo, you know, preventative screening. So I, I tell all my patients, you know, it's really important that everybody goes to their doctor for a wellness check to really talk about, hey, what's my own personal risk of heart disease? And that discussion should talk about the age of menopause. It should talk about any complications during pregnancy. And then you should know your numbers. What's your blood pressure? What are your blood sugars? What is your lipids? And the other thing we didn't talk about, family history of heart disease. So is there a strong family history of heart disease occurring in young relatives, first degree relatives. So I think the first thing is just to have that discussion and really look at all the factors that go into your own personal risk and then decide what you can do to modify those risks. You can't pick who you're born to, so the family history you can't change, but certainly things to help the blood pressure, things to help your diet, your body weight, stop smoking, all those things need to really be taken into account so that you decrease that risk long term. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The, um, do you ever recommend to your patients to, say, go online, get the ASCVD Risk Calculator Plus and fill in the numbers? And I have never told my patients to do that because I think sometimes it makes them a little anxious or it uh, makes them, you know, like unsure of what it means. Because, again, when you see a number, if you get a, a number of 8%, you may say, well, that's pretty low. That's not bad. Eight in 100. Um, so they may not think they need to do anything about it. So I get a little bit nervous about my patients doing that risk score without maybe fully understanding it. But I don't think it's unreasonable to, to go online to get information. I do like the American Heart Association um, Life Simple 7. I think that's really nice to tell you how to be heart healthy, which tells you, you know, about maintaining your ideal body weight, how to have a heart healthy diet. And again, knowing your numbers for blood pressure, blood sugar, uh, diabetes, uh, I'm sorry, uh, cholesterol. So I think that's kind of easier because that tells you the things that you should be doing to be healthy. And I think the risk score can be done by a physician. Sure. Any other factors that are more pronounced when a woman has it? Like what about any of the autoimmune diseases? Who, the women are more susceptible to them. Yeah. So the autoimmune diseases and a lot of the literature is on rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. So both of those conditions are more female predominant, uh, although men can get it as well. So actually it's a risk factor for both sexes. So both both uh, male and female patients who have these autoimmune inflammatory conditions have increased risk of heart disease because inflammation is a driver of this process of plaque depositing in arteries as well as plaque progressing. So it's an important risk factor and it's actually also included as a risk enhancer. But the, the sex difference is mostly the fact that more women have these conditions than men, although others such as ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis, those have either equal or male predominance. And then one area that I would like to ask you about, the final area, is a risk factor that is increasing risk for women. And if the man has it, it decreases his risk. That's called marriage. Because <laughs> the, there's a good literature, as you're aware, on being married. And if you're a single man and you get married, your risk goes down. A single woman gets married and her risk goes up. Can you, <laughs> I know oh. your marriage and you and, and you and Sunil have a great marriage, so I'm not looking at you. Uh, well, I think the issue is how stress plays a role in um, our overall cardiovascular health. So I think it's not necessarily being married, but it might be the responsibilities that you um, take upon yourself in, in, a, in a role with a partner or, or a significant other or, or a spouse. I think uh, women tend to become uh, the managers of the household when they're in these relationships where they take care of the spouse, the children, the pets, maybe the bills, the housework, um, and that's a lot, whereas, uh, 
perhaps the male in that relationship sort of steps back because the female sort of takes on all those responsibilities. So I, that might be it. Um, I think, um, you know, again, these things are complex. Women are really good about telling their husbands to go to the doctor when they don't feel well um, and to get you know, their blood pressure checked or get their, you know, blood sugar checked. Whereas women will make sure everybody else in the household is taken care of first before they get to the doctor. And by then, some of these risk factors might have sort of gone out of control. Yeah, so true. The Well, this has been a fascinating discussion. I really appreciate you joining us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions about the podcast by emailing cvselfstudy at mayo.edu. Be sure to subscribe to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular CME podcast on your favorite platform and tune in each week to explore today's most pressing cardiology topics with your colleagues at Mayo Clinic.